Well, uh, hello everyone. A uh, warm welcome to you. I'm Bob Bain from Welcome Network, and we're once again with uh, the series Pray with Power and Get Results with our good friend Laura Rumley, based in Portugal, and our lovely lady Bola Okuyiga. I think I've got that right, That's Bola. Right. Praise the Lord in Southwest Island is where you are right now, I believe. So. Um, uh, Laura will we'll, we'll, we'll be with you in a moment, but I think we would like Bola to pray for all of us and especially um, the, the, the people watching this program today, that we will indeed grow in the Lord in our prayer life through it. So, um, Bimbola. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good afternoon, I would say to viewers, because or rather good evening, because it's evening where I am here. But we thank God that heaven recognizes all times and um, we can pray <laughs> at any time. Hallelujah. So, Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for our viewers. We want to thank you for your presence in our midst here today. We want to commit all that we will be doing. We pray that even as we listen, you will speak to us again. We're praying about praying with power. Father, we pray that as we listen to Laura today, you will give us more revelation on how we can pray with power. We ask you this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bimbola, while we've got you, do tell us a bit about your ministry that you do, which is, I believe, a prayer ministry. Amen. We started, um, I think it was two, well, we restarted in 2012 with what is called Mums Must Pray, which is setting up groups of mothers all over the world to have their own units to pray for their own children. But we have expanded um, quite a lot and, um, you know, without taking too much time, I'll just give a brief of what we have. We have groups of mothers who teach on worship, pray on worship. We have groups of mothers who pray concerning what's happening in the season of this um, lockdown. We have mothers who, who pray intercessory prayers for young um, pastors and uh, children. And we also have children that we are grooming to learn to pray. In fact, we even have a dads must pray arm. One of, we've got men who have joined us now. And so we even have dads must pray coming up. But we also have um, Kids Must Pray, which is children between 4 and 12, learning how to pray and learning the Word of God. We teach them with the uh, plan of having them teach themselves. We also have Teens Must Pray from 13 to 18, of which Laura is one of our teachers. And um, again, it is to raise these ones to know God in this season. We also have the dual school of the supernatural actually coming up in which we are hoping to teach young. We've had one or two classes, but basically it's teaching the young ones to know who they are in Christ and to recognize the fact that they are part of the army of God. They are relevant in, in the scheme of things where God is concerned and that they also can pray with power. Amen. And lastly, we wanted to raise young prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and, you know, the fifth of the five-fold ministry amongst these young ones. Amen. So, Bimbola, tell us, how would people get in touch with you if they were wanting to know more about the ministry? Look for us on Facebook page. Um, our Facebook page is called Moms Must Pray. I will, um, my, I'll also send my number. I don't know if we can add um, our number to the screen. We have a website, but it's not currently running, so it's not uh -huh. putting that one on. But uh, we have a Facebook page, a Facebook group. So look for Moms Must Pray, and um, you can definitely contact how are you. How are you spelling your moms? Is it M-U-M or M-O-M? M U M. M U M. The English mum. An English mum. We start from the English mums and then we become worldwide mum. So M U M S and um, Mum. Must pray. Well, thank you, Bimbola, for that. That's really interesting. So, Laura, tell us 
um, what's going on this week in uh, what we're going to be talking about. Well, and it's just so exciting to hear what uh, Bimbola is involved in, in terms of, uh, yeah, teaching all these people how to pray with power and basically how to um, be part of uh, making, well, enforcing God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, yeah. And that is our teaching today, on earth as it is in heaven. And mm -hmm. oh, doesn't that sound absolutely wonderful? And and uh, I think sometimes when we when we speak those words, we just kind of go, oh, God, make it so. But I think today we're going to find out that actually we have um, a bit more of a role to play than maybe some people have realized before in ensuring that it is on earth as it is in heaven. OK, so just to review, um, last week we spoke about some of the ways that we as sons of God have a role to play in ensuring that the will of God is done in our lives. So we spoke about how we will pray more powerfully if, instead of focusing on our needs or our problems, we focus on what God's will is concerning those needs or problems. We spoke about how God knew what our needs or problems would be before the foundation of the world. And, um, and about how he set solutions in place long before we were born. I mean, his creation is full of solutions for us. So powerful prayers will trust that God already knows our needs and powerful prayers will thank him for his provision. Powerful prayers will trust that God has already provided a solution for every problem and will ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us in God's word and through his creation what those solutions are. Powerful prayer will then speak to the problem about God's will and command that will to come to pass. Yeah. And powerful prayers will then praise, praise, praise the Lord long before the solution becomes apparent. So that's what we talked about last week. If you missed that video, please do make sure you look at it because it was really good. <laughs> so this week, though, we're going to continue to discuss how to partner with God to ensure that his will is carried out on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, but this week, we'll be broadening our discussion, not just to our needs, but to the needs or problems that exist in our families, our communities, and in our nations. And I think, I think what most people call this is they call this more intercession, okay? So we're gonna be looking a bit more at intercessory prayer. So to start off, I just wanna uh, start by asking a question, which is whose responsibility do you think it is to ensure that the perfect will of God is carried out on the earth? Well, if we were to take the words of the Lord's prayer at face value, it might be construed that what Jesus told us to pray was for God himself to ensure that both his kingdom and his will be established on the earth. You know, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But my question is, is does that interpretation line up with what the Bible actually teaches? So when God made the heavens and the earth, and then created mankind in his image, the first thing that he said to Adam and Eve was that they were responsible <laughs> for ruling over God's creation and subduing it to his will. And that's in Genesis 1. Then God said, starting at verse 26, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the air, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase in number, Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every, every living creature that moves on the ground. And then verse 31, God saw all that he made and it was very 
good. <laughs> so God thinks that it's a really good idea for us to rule and to reign and to subdue the earth. Right. But it kind of went wrong there afterwards. <laughs> so when God created mankind, he created them to be the rulers over the earth and over all the living creatures. But Adam and Eve were to carry out this rulership in complete unity with God. God always intended that things on earth would be exactly the same as they were in heaven. And it was Adam and Eve who were to ensure that this happened. Unfortunately, the serpent deceived Eve into believing that there was a better way for her to carry out this role. The serpent convinced her that she could gain more wisdom and be more like God by doing something that God had expressly told her not to do. Adam and Eve did indeed gain wisdom, but this wisdom was contrary to God's wisdom. And now their descendants would believe that they could determine if something was good or if something was evil. Their decisions would no longer be made in unity with God or according to his wisdom or according to his will. Mankind still ruled over the earth, but now it was with the wisdom of the crafty serpent rather than the wisdom of the sovereign maker of heaven and earth. So I think we've seen the results of that on our earth today. Earth looks less and less like heaven and heaven up until Jesus would have less and less influence on the earth. Now, please make no mistake. God is still sovereign over the earth. He always has been, and he always will be. God has never lost his veto power <laughs> or his ability to ensure that the plans that he established before the earth was created shall be carried out. God is still God. However, God's ability to exercise authority in the day-to-day -day running of our lives and of this planet was handed over to Adam and Eve and to their human flesh and blood descendants. God as a spiritual being could not rescind that authority that he had given them, nor could he supersede it. Mankind and the earth were both lost and eternally separated from God. But hallelujah. We know what happened next in the story. <laughs> Jesus came and he came to change all that. When he died on the cross as perfect God and sinless man, he reestablished God's authority to rule on the earth. Now, God gave a picture of how this would operate when he showed Jacob's son, Abraham's son, Jacob, a ladder. Right? So Jacob had the dream and he saw the ladder between heaven on earth on which angels could ascend and descend between earth and heaven. Now, through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, every single believer, that's me, that's Bob, that's Bimbola, that's you, <laughs> every single believer has the potential to be a Jacob's ladder on the earth. Now, not only is God sovereign, but through Jesus Christ and through us, Father God now has the capacity to issue edicts from heaven that can be carried out on the earth. What often gets forgotten, however, is that these edicts can only be carried out if they are agreed upon and spoken out by his flesh and blood representatives on the earth. He calls those his elect. In other words, the way that God's will is carried out on earth as it is in heaven is through us. So just to finish that off, it's my belief that when G that Jesus did not instruct us to say, thy will be done, <laughs> so that every time we say the Lord's Prayer, we remind God to make sure that he gets his way on planet Earth done. You know, God, remember your will undone. Do, do you mind, please? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Actually, I believe that Jesus included those words to remind us of our responsibility as sons of God, 
to play our role in ensuring that the will of God be carried out on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what do you think, guys? You know, um, I'd like to add something to that, if it's okay, Laura. Um, Please. There is a scripture which, when I first read, I, I was very fascinated um, about it, which is um, Psalm 115, and it's verse 16. Now, it says that the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth, to the earth, the earth he has given to the sons of mankind. You know, it, it, for me, that, that fits in with what you're saying. He is actually almost like, you know, a father having a, a big house and a big garden, and then giving the son some taxes and saying, this is yours, you know, you cultivate that. And um, I think because of that, you know, he's given us, he firstly has created us in his image. So we are creative beings. And um, when, when we're saying thy will be done on earth, we're actually looking to see as it in heaven. I believe that there are things already in heaven that have been made that we are supposed to bring and ensure that they, they actually happen on earth. So we have our own, earth is for us, the sons of men to cultivate, to make sure it is happening correctly, things are working properly, based on the word of God, like you're saying. So we're not just doing it out of the blue, but we are doing it based on, you know, the will and the word of God, which he has already spoken, which we <coughs> word, seeing so many things, we, we, we know what to do. You know, but we have the word, but he's given us this earth to cultivate, to, to modify, to <laughs> whatever, to, you know, uh, how did he say it in Genesis? There was one, to occupy and to dominate. And I think that is why, you see, when we create new cars, we create new houses and new, new inventions, this is the will of God being done on earth. It, many a times we, Spiritual people don't see it as this is being part of the will of God. But I see it as part of the will of God when we occupy till he comes. Well, yes, and especially when we are actually doing what his will is in accordance with his word. Absolutely, 100%. Bob, did you want to add to that before I go on? Um, yeah, I've got a, a, a thought or two there. In terms of the, um, the idea of... God's will being done on the earth as it is in heaven and thinking then in the particular of what God wants us to declare out as his will on earth as it is in heaven and and I and I think that's quite important to to understand what our in Ephesians 2 10 it talks about us being God's workmanship that he has already beforehand planned for us um, to walk in the uh, certain good works and so I think that's a very it's very good to to understand our own um, territory in this stewardship of the earth. And although I'm, I'm sure God and it's wonderful that the Holy Spirit can move us around and really surprise us and certainly surprise the enemy by the um, the full extent of how uh, we have assignments and rulership on the earth. But there are particular things that I know he wants what Bain to do, or Bimbolo, or Laura, and so on. And, and I think that, um, so as we approach this on earth as it is in heaven, and enforcing God's will, I, I know there are certain things that um, God is particularly on my case about, that I know, um, of course, it starts with family life and um, one's own um, personal life in all of that as well. We're, we, we are um, bringing God's will on earth into our own dominion our own place of where we are so that's my thought there yeah yeah and i love it because of course the bible says that there are books in heaven right um i think it's psalm 139 where uh where he says every day of my life was written in your book before one of them came to pass 
you know, and every single one of us has a story. It, there's a storyline. There's, there's the big storyline, which is the planet. And then there's storyline for our nation, storyline for our community, storyline for our family, storyline for us. Every single one of us has a book in heaven mm -hmm. and our lines are in that, are, are in that book you know, and, and we were told, well, I believe we were told our lines before we came, but that's my own personal thing. Maybe not everybody agrees with that. But the point is, is that what, whether we were told in advance or not, we don't necessarily remember what those lines are. <laughs> you know, we're kind of going, um, I'm not quite sure what the next part of the play is. And so we need, we need that revelation of what is written in our book, what is written in our book to be revealed to us. And then when we know, then we can then be part of saying the next line, doing the next thing, the next entrance or exit, the next part of the play. And then we fulfill God's perfect will. And it's, it's that way that he's sovereign in those books that are written. And then, of course, I, I always like to tell people that, you know, a play, you know, Shakespeare play, if you think about a Shakespearean play, you know, it's all written down and there's stage directions and there's particular lines and there's certain actors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the, that's the play, right? But a, di a director has an ability to then modify that play. You know what I mean? And, and they can change the clothing. They can e sometimes they even change where the location is or they change the timing, okay? So we have a lot of directorial license right, which is where we come in as the sons of God and, and we have a play in that, but there's always God's perfect will. And so, yeah, if we wanna make sure that we stay on track uh, on his play <laughs> and not kind of somehow deviate into sort of a, a sequel, <laughs> then the way to do that is to get that revelation. And we do that by hearing what's going on in heaven. And actually, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to move on with that now, um, if I may, <coughs> go for it. Which is, I've got three different ways then about how we can fulfill our role in ensuring that God's will is done on the earth. And like you know, so if you think of like a, a um, yeah, so so basically three different ways. So I think the first way is to assume that responsibility. You know, if if our prayers are always about assuming that God's going to do it or His angels are going to do it. You know, um, I think that kind of takes out that actually we probably have a role as well. So I think the very first thing that we should do is to take that responsibility and, um, and to ask God, you know, for specific ways in what we can do. Okay, so maybe there's uh, somebody that he wants us to speak to. Okay, so um, or maybe there's something that he wants us to do. Uh, perhaps there's something he wants us to give. Maybe we're supposed to give something to somebody. Um, perhaps there's a, an earthly government official that we're supposed to petition. You know, maybe we're supposed to call up our elected representative or send a letter, or maybe it's how we're supposed to vote, okay? So um, as sons of God, we must always ask ourselves first when we pray, <laughs> God, is there anything that I'm supposed to be doing? in this world to enforce your will and ensure that your will is uh, carried out. And there's just a scripture that I really love. It's actually in the book of Job. And it, it really speaks of a son of God who knew who he was and who really acted out that role as a son of God. And it's in Job 29, starting at verse seven. And this is before he had all of his issues. He's remembering back to when he was in that place of righteousness as a son of God. And he says, when I went to the gate of the city, and the gate of the city speaks of where all of the uh, legislative decisions are made. When I went to the gate of the city and took my seat in the public square, the young men saw me and stepped aside, and the old men rose to their feet. The chief men refrained from speaking and covered their mouths with their hands. The voices of the nobles were hushed and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouths. Whoever heard me spoke well of me, and those who saw me commended me. Because he didn't just speak, he didn't just speak what was right and what was just, but he followed up those words with action. Because I rescued the poor who cried for help, and the fatherless who had none to assist them. The one who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing. 
I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my robe and my turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy. I took up the case of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the wicked and snatched the victims from their teeth. And so there's that combination of he stood at the city gate, he fulfilled his role as an elected representative, but then he also followed that up with action. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Any interjections before I go on? No? Okay, so the second thing, and this kind of relates into what we were talking about last week, was that we must go to the word of God and seek out what God has written in his word concerning his will for our families, communities, and nations. Once we've found those appropriate scriptures, our role then is to decree those words into the spiritual realm. Our God, the God in whose image we are made, created through his words. God spoke and it came to pass. And that same creative capacity, that same creative ability, we have as sons of God. God's words in our mouth have the same creative capacity as God's word in his mouth. Just as the words of Jesus were spirit and they were life, the words of the Holy Spirit spoken through us have the same power to create life, to bring life to situations, and to create God's perfect will on this earth. And as James wrote, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him and when we pray and speak out those words that are his word those words will come to pass and then there's just uh, one last thing and uh, this again relates to our position in heaven okay there will be many things that god wants to carry out on this earth that can only be accomplished through his angelic host okay some of these require his elected representatives on earth to come into agreement with, ha with what has been decreed in heaven. And remember, we talked about that in Hebrews uh, 12, um, where it says that, you know, you have not come to uh, a Mount Zion, like, you know, God and smoke and everything. You've come to the heavenly Jerusalem. And there in that heavenly Jerusalem is seated the church, the ecclesia. We are seated in Christ, in heavenly places, right? And so what we do is in that heavenly place, we hear through the Holy Spirit what God is saying today in, for our families, for our communities, for our nations. And our role is to come into agreement with those. And I believe that that is what Jesus meant when he said in Matthew 18, truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Now, another possible translation of that is will have been bound in heaven. So truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth um, will have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will have been will have been loosed in heaven. So therefore, as his elected representatives on earth, we can declare God's will and those angels, the edict goes out. I don't know if you remember me talking about Esther and the edict going out and the couriers going out and they send that word out. And then everybody in the kingdom knew that that word had to come to pass. And that's when we start ruling and reigning as God's ecclesia on the earth. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Laura, for, for that. That was amazing to oh, that unpacked and also to think of us sitting in the gates and really declaring out God's will on earth as it is in heaven and to act act in in a just way in a righteous way the Lord loves 
his people to be on on the job, as it were, going about his father's business. I love that. Bimbo, do you want to add anything to that before um, we come to a close today? No. No. <laughs> we, we normally um, uh, get, get some tremendous stories from you, Bimbo, but we've, um, <laughs> instead we've actually been listening to the story in terms of your the, the work of the Lord in your recent life with the Mums Must Pray ministry. And um, I know the Lord is going to um, unfold some more chapters of that in the coming months and years. So it's yeah. a pleasure to have you as part of the panel of Pray With Power. Laura, Thank tell you. us how we can contact you. I would say something actually with the children. Um, one of the things that um, I would say is, um, you know, children, it's a pleasure teaching children. It can be quite challenging because sometimes they are, you know, um, all over the place. You don't know if they're concentrating. But when you see the children, I remember one of the classes we had and it was with the teens, and we had a, a gentleman called Dottini come and uh, teach, and uh, he taught on healing. And what we're talking about was one of the things that was put into practice because he taught the young children that they should not pray, oh Lord, heal the sick people, and uh, you know, stuff like that, but rather address the sickness, you know, taking authority as sons. So what happened in the meeting, we also had um, one or two adults and one of them had arthritis and he had asked, you know, is everybody sick? And this woman had said, yep, I have arthritis. And um, what happened there was um, one of the children who had been receiving the teaching was asked to pray for this lady who had arthritis. So what the little girl did was address the sickness. You know, as a son, we might say she's child, but this is one of the things that excites me. The fact that this is this gospel is not just for the adults, it's for the children too. So mm. the little girl addressed the arthritis, commanded it to leave. And what she was taught is check. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how was it first? It was, um, I think it was seven. Then it went down to four. And then eventually this lady began to jump up and sing. And this was all on Zoom because she had been totally healed. Who spoke the word? It was a little girl. But what did she speak? She spoke the word of God. She obeyed the word of God and addressed the sickness just like Jesus would have done. So <laughs> that is the testimony for today. Thank Amen. you. That's wonderful. Amen. And that's what I love. Amen. And that's yeah. what I love is that is that these secrets, you know, you don't have to have been like, you know, a Christian for like 50 years. You don't have to know, uh, you know, your Bible inside out. You just have to know one or two key things. <laughs> and it doesn't matter who you are. You can be, you know, in the farthest desert somewhere in a mud hut somewhere and you can decree and declare the word and the will of god and it shall yeah. come to pass amen. and that's just what's so amazing about this amen amen <laughs> well thank you laura for that and i'm and i that we have talked today um on on earth as it is in heaven and of course we will be going on to other aspects of the lord's prayer won't we in coming programs so we're looking forward to that very much and Amen. we appreciate the teaching input that you're giving to the body of Christ it's a real blessing yeah. to have you uh, doing this series so let's just pray for everyone listening to this program today and mm -hmm. father we thank you for your faithfulness towards your people that you have not left us without the Holy Spirit, the teacher within us, to bring that yes and amen into our spirits as we listen to your words of life pouring through our beings, Lord. So we open ourselves up not to lose these words, not to find them just cast aside or forgotten during the, uh, the days ahead, Lord. We pray that we will have them, we will apply them, we will eat them, internalize them, and so they will come out of our beings as life and blessing not just for ourselves but the situations and the people 
around us, Lord. May we be grown up sons and daughters in the way in which we walk on this earth. And Lord, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We declare um, to the situations around us now that the, the will of the Lord be done to these circumstances now. The will of the Lord be done now in my family. The will of the Lord be done now in the families of all the people on this program today. In your precious mighty name, Lord Jesus, we stand in the gates on earth as it is in heaven. We declare the will of God. Amen. 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 And yeah, I just, amen. I just feel that I want to speak over all of you listeners. And I just want to say that Jesus is saying to you now, he is saying, you know, rise up sons of God, rise up sons of God, take your place in the gate, be established in your righteousness you know, wear justice as your turban, <laughs> you know, just be established in who you are in Christ, seated Amen. in heavenly places as his ecclesia, and just hear the word of the Lord for your lives, for your needs, for your problems, for your communities, and take your place in his kingdom as his son, as his elective, elected representative on earth. Amen. Amen. So, Laura, tell us again your contacts and of your through your blog. What what does the how can people uh, get to know about your blog and how well, to contact you? All of these uh, all of these posts are available on my blog, which is downloadsfromheavenblog.wordpress.com. And uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, God bless you and. Uh, a, a goodbye to everybody and it's been wonderful to be together with you and thank you for giving us the the opportunity to speak into your life through this program bye bye for now bye for now bye everybody bye Bob.